common government they use for engaged citizens them on many many issues then. And today, like Una said, no, because we don't put the fly at the mouth. Today we can't concentrate on education because we know say that some thing we be to president the heart. And for can talk about the education business for the country, we get people away don't spend bok bok years in this sector. So we will start for introduce with panelists them before I go to the updates. We first panelists na the possible day in charge now for basic and senior secondary education with uh, Mr. Conrad Saki. We will say Mr. Saki before now na every day na the teaching service commission. So Mr. Saki let me for car update three on which the general updates na the basic education sector as government don't start the second mandate. We also get the system three. We na post himself we done in a university, he don't lecture for a long, long time. We now president don't be in confidence for make he be the minister for technical and higher education when I talk to Ramatulai. We also deal with the technical education. We also get to border we in a civil society organization. We don't work extensively by education based in this country. When uh, Mr. Alfonso Mali, we say for their for can tell me what in a CSO they respond to government education as it happen now. We also get the Deputy Minister for Technical and Higher Education, we David we for also accompany the minister we can talk to me when uh, Mr. Sadu Aziz, we David we as well for can discuss. But we also know say um Yesterday and today, we know say rumors that be there around. Um, we know say there are threats of protests that we have been. So we know say for the media, we have been interested for know about what is not happened so far since yesterday. So we get with we people away. They can talk to me from the security sector. We get Mr. Abu Karim Will, we are deputy director for strategic communications, office of national security. And we get Unapadi, we na Guy Makaba Media One. We also come on Salon Police for can talk to me and give you updates about what's not happen. Then also as a ministry, because we believe say this press conference, if I include all man, if I include people away not able to talk, people away the IFA, and people also get speech impairment. <coughs> so today for the first time, we will introduce we sister away with we. We are the director of children and adolescents with hearing impairment. We are Mami Peters. We will help you with sign language. So if we say if person day some sign, we not hear or he not talk or he get speech impairment, he will explain to them in the sign language they understand. And normally for the panelists them, we can normally start with openings for five minutes for make we able to summarize, we update, and then we can open answer questions. But I will start first with the government update. Today, Tuesday, we are the 12th September, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Don Left Salon, for go United States of America, for go attend the 78th session of the UN General Assembly, where they go for host and New York. Now, this is the first time in 50 years where the president they lead the delegation, where Salon, the elector as member of the Security Council. Now, the president, where he don't go, he don't accompany with the first lady and also with Boku High Profile government official. Then. And part of them, people away, therefore, accompany the president. Now, we Minister of Information and Civic Education, when uh, Mr. Chairman Ablaiba. We himself gets for the uh, New York with the president. When I make, in fact, you know, they are for host this press conference today. In addition to that one day, we also know say on Monday yesterday, the president received letters of credentials from the ambassador of the United States of America. When the new one will come, when His Excellency Brian David Hunt, and also the ambassador of Ireland to Sierra Leone. We na uh, Aidan Fitzpatrick with them present the letter there yesterday to President for me officially starts for work. 
Now, inside a own message where he gets, the U.S. ambassador say they look forward for work with government and people of Sierra Leone for see how we will advance with common interests between America and Salon. He also say America don't be a strong supporter for Salon and they will continue for partner closely for see how we will advance democracy and inclusive society. Similarly, on Monday again, we also see the security sector when I make them there. They successfully able to tap a protest where we all know say na people away not identify themselves, they will not savvy. We then be plan say they were undermining peace and security. We then be plan for make them go on the streets Monday, yesterday, and today. But we know say so far the security sector, the police, they don't make several arrests and then the way they help the police with the investigation. On behalf of the government, I want to commend every Sahelian who come here study and today, they show bravery and courage for come out, for do their normal business. They want to go to school, they want to go work, they want to go open a shop, open a market, because they know say government are the only authoritative voice for talk to people on when for commerce or when not for commerce. So because I listen to government, we want to tell them thank you, we want to assure them say the security sector they're fully prepared and then get on top of situation for protect life and property. In not happening over the weekend, the Minister of Information and Civic Education, Mr. Chairman Abulaiba, also be go launch the media agenda policy with sludge the Mipunado and the sludge AGM na Kenema. This policy now for look at um, affirmative action them. And various provisions then we for look at pay equity, access to resources, and also how for tackle sexual and gender-based violence among women them and inside sludge. And on Thursday, the Minister also of Information and Civic Education will launch the review process of the draft national information policy, where there be all the events now do us now bo. Saturday again over the weekend, the Ministry of Transport and Aviation and the stakeholders them na the transport sector we also do engagements na Putloko, Makeni, Bo, Kenema and Kono, where they go engage people them for see how they will refrain from violence, from the peaceful and law abiding, for make them make sure say yesterday and today they pull them to come from one and for support people them for transport them for work. On Friday, NASIT also begins engagement with the staff of Port Authority, where they will talk to them about what NASIT they do, NASIT benefits, and how they will also join for NASIT the business. So, I saw the updates then start, and I saw them stop, and I will stop there so far for make we start with program proper. So, but what I want to do, I have for me to get first general security update from Mr. Will because we know say Boku people are interested for know what's not happening from yesterday to today. So at least they will be informed. But I have for me, Mr. Will and the other security man will say this segment now five five minutes for me to go summarize them because then we will ask questions. So over to you, Mr. Will. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. By the intelligence estimate and security assessment, we can state say the general security situation and the entire country relatively calm and peaceful. In all of the regions, life don't return to normalcy. Before the event of yesterday, when on Monday, 11 September this year, the security sector and other relevant state institutions be extensively engaged in general public on matters related to national security, the rule of law and responsible citizenship. For example, the security sector in collaboration with the ministries of transport, trade and internal affairs, they engage various private sector institutions and other communities with the use uh, the engagement here for talk to bike riders, motor drivers and KK drivers, traders council, among others. 
We also will use loudspeakers where we mount on vehicles and go right down communities for talk to people. Level. For giving confidence onto members of the public, the leadership of the security sector on Saturday, the 9th of September 2023, we go out in western areas who are urban uh, in a show of master force. We get similar engagement at all of the other districts across the country. The security sector strategic communications team also they engage in extensive media outreach. They will continue with their kind engagement. Too. But before the deployment of the personnel, them, uh, we make efforts for giving them thorough briefing on the need uh, for letting them use professional force if they get to respond to situations. With the exception of some isolated incidents that will be reported, particularly in the Moeba community, everything we went well on uh, the day uh, of yesterday. We will launch full scale, we will launch full scale investigations for look at uh, what will happen in Moeba and we will inform the public accordingly. On the whole, the security sector will be evidently on top of the tax to protect lives and property. We will continue in this path. The sector, the commencing society organizations, we do provide collaborative support. Uh, and the ministry for ensure that uh, we reach out to the public. But we also equally concern that the other one them down, they in the habit for big statements, we only aim at undermining national security interventions and by doing so, they will put the security sector at a bad light and embolden citizens who are do things really outside of the law. With the state say the sector maintains an open law policy and in this regard we ask members of the public for always being bold for engagement whenever they get concerns. The security sector they maintain like I say an open law policy yes. is available. Feel free for ask questions. On arrests, it will be stated that even before the unauthorized demonstrations, people will be as planners for their kind of events here, we pick them up, we arrest them. And uh, yesterday's event also will lead to several arrests. So when people in the way not get much for do with their events and they don't be released, the other one they help the CLM police for investigate the matter. For end, the importance for states is to remain a very peaceful country. Uh, and uh, we expect say this will be the case for the longest time going forward. The security sector is fully in control and will encourage every Sierra Leonean for do things away within the provisions of the law and refrain from doing things away the outside of the law. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Will, for ONS. Uh, Mr. Will go with me during the course of the press conference, just in case anybody could get any question for ask Mr. Will on the update for the security sector. Now, um, that may go bring we to the topic of the for the today, because we know say today we did can talk about education. And for talk about education, I don't introduce my colleague ministers them and also somebody from civil society. Um, we remember say on basic education five years ago when the president uh, long term, we don't increase budget allocation, we don't do bokutin for school feeding, we don't do bokutin for specialize them, we don't do bokutin and bokut provision that we don't make for textbook, learning materials, we don't do them. But the only possible way we can explain down the we for update we, who's out there now, and we see that vision going forward, na the minister to the president don't get confidence for put before, for move, the basic and senior secondary education business for go before. So I go invite my brother Conrad for can update me on waiting and who's have day so far. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad for the app. Um, I'm glad for seeing so many people there. So since uh, we get so many journalists there, I'm glad to take this opportunity for just giving uh, uh, an overview of what we do at the education system. So firstly, in terms of basic and senior secondary education, we cover from pre-primary school, or which we will be called NOSGI, primary school, junior secondary school, and senior secondary school. 
We do this both in the formal sector, that is when we get people in our schools, and we also do it in the non-formal sector. This is now what we try for engage them, we can win all these schools back into school. Um, so, for example, we know say pregnant girls there in the past, they're not really doing our school, but now we try for we engage them. But then the other one, we don't want to go to school. But we try to engage them. We call them out of school children. And we try to engage them back into the system. Now, in order for us to deliver these services, we get three other um, component parts of the ministry. And then uh, the Teaching Service Commission, with the in charge of the management of teachers. We get WAEC, we all know they in charge of exams. Then we get say, I don't like the both. Now, let me start off with a very bold statement. I know quite a lot of people, they say, we quality education day again, or you know day again. Well, let me say, we quality education still day. The government still maintain the 22% commitment to the budget. And if you they, if you they spend 22% of your budget, they say they are alive and kicking. What we will not do, um, last year we agree on um, an education sector plan. We will share with the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education. But let me just do a quick summary of we own aspect of the um, education sector plan, just for doing out some basis of that. Firstly, um, we get nine strategic objectives. The first one is strengthening institutional um, core. That look, currently we get four curricula that we don't develop in the country. One for um, early childhood education, we get another one for basic education, we get another one for senior secondary education, um, and then we get one for civic education. So in terms of strengthening that institutional core, we are trying to align them so that it goes smoothly as you move from one level to the other, but also align them to be teaching and learning materials as well. The second strategic objective uh, the recruitment, retaining, retaining and development um, of excellent teachers. Now, just last year alone, the recruitment and replacement of teachers, we get about 3,000 teachers that were put in the system. Also, in addition to that, we process about 3,000 teachers though, for promotion and reassessment. Um, so that's not something we want to make on our, on our, on our, on our being aware of. The third um, objective now for reduce gender and other disparities. We all know say we get the GB Act now. And um, let me just say this, we currently get 27% of the teacher that are female. We need to increase that day to the minimum, at least, let me use the word, at least the minimum of 30%. And so that now something we will work on. We strongly believe in this because we know say who's a female teacher then they we also they have the education of guard, the guard child. And you also they make sure so they guard between and not go part of the system. So that's something that we have really work on. And then I take disability. You know today we get somebody with the sign language. We also get quite a lot of the buildings that what they do now when they talk about lamps so that then people are really physically challenged, they go to school. But let me concentrate on the one other aspect that we now go hear quite a lot about. This is what we call an education invisible disabilities. People away, for example, get mental health issues, then get autism, then get dyslexia. This now on a new team we they do now in a salon, where we provide what they call reasonable adjustments and accommodation or make sure say we provide for the needs of them beginning day. So for example, if they do your exam, we will give extra time for me to do that day. We also get thing that we call assistive technology, where we help the beginner for make sure say they will participate on an equal basis. Let me move on to the next one, we are um, objective four, we are about the safe environment. So we don't talk about, you know, things like sexual and gender based violence, but also what we try to do this year, we want to make sure, say, all we school them, we get for state kids, now we school them, we train with each other, we use them for state kids then. The next one, objective five, strengthen governance and accountability. This is, we don't do quite a lot of work around school boards and governing bodies and all that and before. Even within the ministry, we the strengthening the audit committee, strengthening the um, procurement committee, all of this for just make sure, say, in terms of governance and accountability, and um, we do on top of this. The next one, objective six, is enhancing um, emergency preparation and, and response and climate education. Let me focus on climate, well, two things. Let me go back to um, 
emergency. We don't get several shocks in the system. We na easily make with the we get the eleven year of civil war, we people that die, the infrastructure we destroy, and all that. And in addition, you get Ebola, we become. Then you get COVID. So we don't get in systems that we're in place or make sure say we go respond to these things very quickly. So when COVID comes, for example, we will not develop a radio teaching program we will use for engage with the them with another school. But let me go back to climate action. You know the question go uh, 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 conference recently. We want to be engaged with Bikinem because they are the future for this country. They, they have to take control of the situation, the environment, because that they get an effect on climate change. They, uh, they get an effect as a result of climate change. The next one, where I want to talk about objective seven. Now, how do they eliminate corruption in the system? Now, I will talk quite a lot about that because I'm pretty sure I will ask some questions and that, but not to just on exam my practices the normal. We they look at procurement, we they look at senior like payroll, we they look at pay qualifications as well, <coughs> and an issue within the sector. Then we go to objective eight, strength in partnership and support for learning and work readiness. Let me stress on this. In terms of partnership, like we have some good news. Just within this month, we just signed an agreement with the World Bank with a new $20 million for a foundation on learning. We also signed an agreement with another organization with a call Education Above All with a new $13.7 million. Then we also get the um, Global Partnership for Education also just approved $40 million. So if you look at that, we have 70 million plus in terms of a partnership for make sure same we're able to deliver for, for this country. But we also want to develop partnership with parents and the communities. We also want to develop partnership with even NGOs because most of these NGOs, then they do quite a lot of education and training of teachers in our system. So we want to see how we will align ourselves with them for make sure so we maximize the benefit for people. Last but by no means the least. I know. <laughs> we, the last um, objective, now how we increase data and how we use technology. You know the last minister now with technologies. So one of the good things we do, introduce quite a lot of education technology, um, what you call education technologies into the system. Now we intend to continue for the learning, but with time, I, I, I need to stop at this point and tell that thank you for listening to me. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, come here na, na a teacher. So you know, a teacher needs talk, eh? They expect, expect, expect for more understand. But well, fantastic, we have said the C say, even though uh, the second time just starts, but it all starts with fire. You can see the energy we have uh, come like put. And what they don't tell me, all the partnership money that we don't carry side, you say almost 70 million. We are think it's huge for government, huge for your confidence. But then, then just stay now the basic and senior secondary. We also get the technical and higher education. And we also know, say, um, five years ago, we don't get the University Act of 2021, we don't depoliticize the university, we don't give STEM free tuition to women them where they land book at the university, but also don't expand the grants in it. And we get to sister. We also will give you updates because um, in just they take over. But in no new, this is a little lecture at the university for some time. So you get poco poco experience. So over to you, Dr. Wogi, for updates from the ministry. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. And good afternoon to everybody really inside this room. Good afternoon to you and they will be listening to me online. You and they will be, uh, um, well, we get for this still later. Um, I want to use this opportunity to tell the Ministry of Information and Communication, and, sorry, Information and Civic Education, plenty thank you for the increase this platform. Now, something we very much needed because it connects with you and they will be excellent your point for lead. Um, in terms of national development, it connects with, with, with the, the population we really serve. So I'm going to tell them thank you for creating this platform. So we come up from the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education. And what we do within that ministry is we do look at technical training, so vocational training, and also universities. 
And we exist the manpower where they support national development. For me, education I you need to not create that manpower there at different levels there. It will be very difficult for me to drive national development. Plenty thing they for talk about within the sector of the way the ministry deal with. But I just want to focus today on granting aid and scholarship with the ministry and partners them and countries they will we get a relationship with where they give you for support to your agenda for human capacity. So the government scholarship program, we can all agree say in a testament for say for lady government continue for for invest in this, and they show the commitment of the government to build the human capital development, and also for provide access. If I'm waiting the graduate scheme, they will remove that financial barrier, where some people will experience, we will create challenge if the barrier they need for lady access higher education. And the new direction is that the government committed for creating this enabling environment, who side post-secondary uh, students then will be able for thrive and see how we can give them the skills them where we need for push forward national development. And we have various scholarship programs them and we can offer them on merit based or needs based and we also the ensure say the, the group that we often underrepresented they included in that. So earlier um, somebody don't talk about the STEAM field so this is the science technology and engineering, agriculture, and math field. So these are the science field. And we don't notice over the years say women they not really right, no not plenty inside the field. And they, so we we they take that into consideration. We also hear about people that would they live with disability. Often and we they think of disability as the one we see the physical disability. So we for create platforms and create programs and create access for them for them to able benefits because they they all we are all part of society we are all Sierra Leoneans them so waiting available to one group but be available to everybody as well so we take all that into consideration so I was first start for talk about the Sierra Leone granting aid and then we get international scholarship them but in general for for all student program and the, how would they notify the public? We we'll get different platforms that we we'll they use. We we'll get with websites, the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education website, when at www.mthe.gov.sl, we we'll advertise with opportunities them available. We we'll also get a Facebook page within the area now of social media. So we say we for more with them. So we go with Facebook page or we we'll use them as a platform for communicate with, with the public. And we Facebook page, it named Ministry of Technical and Higher Education Sierra Leone. We also get um, Twitter, now they call her X. We get Twitter handle. And we Twitter handle now at tech, T E C H H I H H I G H E I E D U. So tech higher E D U. Now the only three platforms, and well, then um, we can also put notices them out. But these are the only platform they will use for communicate with the public about scholarship opportunities and, and writing aid and opportunity to the public. We don't hear it over the over a, a recent time, people have been one for misuse their thing in the you see. For example, recently, me not get Facebook page. I've been get but I don't get Facebook page anymore. But over the last few weeks, I see different, different people that bring to my attention say they don't create Facebook page in your name and they advertise scholarship, they say for pay. The ministry never ask anybody, no money not attached to any scholarship or granting aid application. I will say that again. The Ministry of Technical and Higher Education never ask anybody for pay for <coughs> anything. And as a ministry, we will try to see how we put measures in place to address that day, so we we'll communicate with the public when we don't put that day in place. So currently, we don't we do the application for granting aid for this for the upcoming academic year. It don't go far. It don't progress. We don't um, um, advertise. We open up to students um, across the country because we want to ensure the regional representation. One region of benefits past the other region. We therefore ensure say all man benefits equal from the granting aid scheme because we want for 
um, increase access to, 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 to um, education. For this, for the upcoming academic year, we will receive over 14,000 applications then from all the 16 districts in Ogen and Salo. We don't conduct interviews. Then. And we don't just say interviews in a, a national level, in a fit or a but we do not interviews at district level. And we get criteria we would use for shortlist because of that 14,000 day, unfortunately, not all man will get that. So we get criteria we will use for shortlist. The one day we will shortlist that will be invited for interview based on who's ID. If you do within the Western area, obviously, you go interview in the nearest um, interview station. If you do not in this state, that's all they want. And as I all mentioned earlier, because the national development agenda, we, we, we know the flagship program now, now feeds salon agriculture. So the STEAM field that I've been explained earlier, we agree priority to them, to students there, we want for study subjects within that field. And even more priority to female students and for what for increase the number of women within in their field there as well. And with the other criteria and I can see if you do the first year of the program, you know for apply. So now the partners also can use, but we go on, we progress then you stand the chance to apply. The interviews will do at national level at district level, and the committee that will make for interviews, the, 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 the applicants then, they include at national level, we chief technical higher education officer within the ministry, all the directors will get within the ministry, and also the student secretary will get within the ministry, and they serve as the secretary for that committee, for that interview. At this state level, we include the deputy directors, and so we as the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education, deputy directors will all get. We also include a, a representation <coughs> of the Committee for um, Civil Society, Registrar of the Tertiary Institution, Anti Corruption, just for ensure, say, the process is free and fair. And we don't go through all that process day. We are now at a point where we they compile all this data out of more from the 16 districts there. And whatever we we will we um, 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 publish that they, they get and they get for be regional balance, gender get for be considered, and even with people they will deal with disability. Because basic um, 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 and senior secondary education, their radical inclusion, we don't educate them right up until senior secondary. We don't invest money for training. And as I also say, they're part of society. They, they, they get a role for playing national development. If we left them now at higher education level, then what you, why we spend all that money? So we therefore ensure they'll be included in everything we do. Then they get for big paramount to So that means that for the Sierra Leone granting aid. And then we get international scholarships. So we get various countries that we offer with an international scholarship. We get China, we get Hungary, we get Russia, we get Morocco, we get Greece, Kuwait, Algeria, and also the Commonwealth to recover from the UK government. Again, when they're available, we advertise them by the platform, the world will tell us. And we don't get a number of awardees, then we, every year, we, 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 we continue for support to a work for say plenty thank you to the government of the UK and country there as well. Because then they really support we and, and, and we agenda for human capital development. We also link to national development. For the upcoming academic year, we already received notice from Russia for say they want for for, for um, support some of the students and for go study. This morning we also received notice from them for say they want to train doctors in in in, in, in trauma and orthopedic still the way we get and we need more people and in country for, for supporting within the health sector. So for the international scholarship, the eligibility criteria, what did they make you apply? Not only we the dictates, now then they tell you, although we still forget and we get something for stable diet, we can negotiate with them for the field of study because we set up with your national and, and development agenda. So they align with national development agenda with the fields of study within different countries that I mentioned, where they offer we, we, we students then. And I, and I will stress this again, gender and the STEAM field and as something where they promote. And even recently, so it just will be inclusive, which we they think for as a ministry and we plan for as a ministry. I provide to all them different um, embassy then they, and say, okay, we know so many give you scholarship, we not only support you. But what for inquire now say, when our services there, when our universities there, and also with students in the book study. 
then disabled friendly because we want to open up their scholarship there so for also people that really live with disabilities so but we're not going to get forget that confirmation they force from them say yes the university is then disabled friendly before we do that we're going to send focus in going now then a the, the service is not disabled friendly so this is some of the things that we would think for ensure say we're very inclusive in what they do the scholarship package and the vary from country to country, not to one size fits all. So, what in one country they give to the same as what in the other country they give. Some, in terms of what in students that they get, then they, they, they get more compared to others. So, the Sierra Leone government, for the one that they are the less attractive package, the Sierra Leone government, they come into that, they provide support for ensure say they get everything where they need for let them uh, acquire the skills and knowledge where they go they forget then they come back and contribute to national development. All what will they do so even this this um, press conference and for promote transparency for ensure say what will they do be transparent. And we as a government we committed to transparency and fairness in how we award scholarship and also granting aid. And we, they, we, we get, for example, we, we also we they reflect on real own systems they all get. We get a policy, policy for international scholarship. Day. Policy, that was something we they develop, they say that's it. You get for the review on. The review are based on experience. So we as a ministry, we don't say, okay, the 10 long panel for we review this policy, we'll get for the international scholarship system. Based on the experience over the years, where the ministry don't, the, in terms of the successes, the challenges, and low we ensure say we put them down in paper. We don't we in black and white, waiting at the challenges and, and how we want to address them. The solutions and also we don't want to come up with the solutions. We therefore consult with the right people. Come up with the solutions and they will make them very transparent. We therefore be available on the website. We therefore share with the countries the way they provide you scholarship to ensure say everybody they on the same page when it comes to scholarship. I will stop here now for now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, say, uh, the minister is a lecturer. <coughs> so, you know, when you get teacher, you get lecturer, you know, they explain. Ah, they go into detail, eh? So, I think uh, mm. we don't see a comprehensive explanation on scholarship. And the reason we to make now, because let somebody not go tell you and say, oh, I'm a scholarship for Cello, or I get this for which is the call of the ministry. No. You don't hear it from the minister. Waiting and waiting, you need to do forget the scholarship and wait at the platform and what's the way it's for use, forget the legitimate scholarship. So I think we will go to the um, CSO person where we also want for limited to five minutes for make a give what's that the CSO response normally to the education sector. So I will invite my brother Alfonso Mali. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Minister. Members of the Fourth Estate, I want to tell all thank for all account and recognize all other ministers and deputy ministers. We all know the pre quality education begin in 2028. It begins in phases. Waiting at the first phase, because we're going to the basis for no sound of common or sound of reach. Waiting at the assessment of the implementation of the free quality education. We all know say that phases be the first I will say for eliminate SS4, for eliminate tuition fee, the provision of learning and teaching materials for primary school and for textbook, for secondary school and two maths and English, the creation of a situation room, situation room that they can do by election. This year experience with the Kenema and the Kaila and the Bond, so you report with the send everybody the look up, share experience. The payment of examination fees. And they be for both government, government assisted and private schools for the first four years until we put by the school common. And also the creation of interministerial committee, because in terms of education is cross cutting. The Ministry of Education for TCS became for the Watana School, but the Ministry of Water Resources and get our responsibility for ensuring Watana School. So that for that cross cutting. So when Minister Senge came, he said this is very unfair, the way they assess education. Because if I assess all around there, you don't put tuition fee, yes. You don't pay school for picking there, yes. You don't supply, so it will be yes, yes, yes. It's less how guiding principle, so we can better assess education. Therefore, it's the four guiding principles. The first one are universal access. 
Normal speaking, you know, access to education. Mm -hmm. And term by term, by categories, be you male, be you female, whether you are able or whether you are disabled. Second, in a comprehensive safety. Comprehensive safety is a youth package. I did get wash facility, I did get school feeding, the environment where people they learn, the, the way the classroom for day for ensuring you learn and an environment where conducive, we will improve learning outcome. The third being radical inclusion. Of course, we don't say radical inclusion, we get four key objectives. For ensuring they will find out between them, if along the line you are pregnant, you know, for above your education. Because there was an issue where one of the civil society organizations take government to their co-ascorts and the ban was overturned because there was a ban on pregnant girls not to go to school. So we get four key objectives on radical inclusion in the day. Then one in the day for ensure say the one day where pregnant go back to school, call their pregnant planners, those with different labeled people there, don't know come on a far, far, far rural community, remote community, and don't know come on a poor family background. These are the four key objectives. And the last uh, uh, guiding principle, the quality teaching and learning. I did get the teaching service commission, I did get wired, I did get the learning and teaching material. The government is supposed to aid learning. So go on for ask how far this don't go. The minister for sex be pays for basic education make mention and he refer to the documents who've done the advocates for so long. If they talk about education, before limit yourself within the education sector plan. Mark you, we have two ministries, the Ministry of Higher Education and BASIC. If you go back to the ESA, the Education Sector Analysis, in the analysis, they tell you one great minister overwhelmed for all both ministries. So because of education service delivery, the president in the wisdom divide the ministry for ensure so you focus. So that education sector plan, anything on the do about education, that inside it, if you act outside that, I believe say parliament will call you for go answer question. So again, nine key objectives, within the Minister of Basic Talk, within the Minister of Higher Education Talk, all for this side is called the education sector and one sector. But all of this will be achieved not without challenges. Right. Now, one of the biggest will happen at the sector, especially the basic education sector, when we go to the call the Education Act from 2004, and that act don't be reviewed in 2022, don't get brand new act only for basic education. And that brand new act we don't get for basic education, don't change the dynamics of education. In the 2004 Education Act, Section 1, clearly they tell you say private school, now school government they spend money back. In the 2023 Act, no, it don't give the minister the mandate. As I see them, even for help private school. Now, somebody will say one big school, the minister will go to the government based on this education sector analysis, one of the gap home here. Everybody does the big school, everybody does the cow with school. Now we don't go to the call school approval guidelines. Government they give subsidy. We don't go to the call fee subsidy guidelines. First thing, we just go put any school in any cell, we don't go to the call catchment policy. First them, the annual school census na paper base. Now na electronics will they collect the data. But the question is, what will they do down there for ensure so we improve learning outcome? So I believe say if we come back on my next angle, my dad will let for talk one. Thank you very much, uh, Kex. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I found a lot of teacher when I talk about it. I see so many. So we get a chance more today. We're gonna come on real quick. So I think um, clearly we don't see say um, what you want to do as government and for make sure say we now hold that gap between citizens and also we we presidents don't appoint for staff. And this is make we choose education this week. Now because we no say school law open. All my other questions, all my other concerns we never ask, and also scholarship na important something. Now I make we come with the two ministers and I. Um, not forget say we get the QR code we the on the screen. If you are ask a question for make you join we the one in safe we they connect with you online. We can use them, but normally because we can send the flyer out early, 
we the can take with four set of questions there from people then. We don't ask before, we can't today, and then all commodity will come inside na the all naya because we know say una we don't spend the time, don't come all the way, we get forgiven ourselves that expected. So the question them actually um, we get three questions then but this is now more for the Minister for Technical Higher Education. So the first one from Alpha Uma Ubai, where the acts from China. He said, hello, Madam Minister, for this. Hello, Mr. Minister. Thanks for this wonderful initiative to bring the government close to the people. Please ask the Minister for Technical and Higher Education about our SLG stipend for us in China. Um, Alpha Uma Ubai himself continues to say that, um, is it that we are remain, is it that the remaining students don't deserve the SNG? I think still not the SNG. At industry and everybody in China, they ask about the stipend for the SNG. Um, Alpha Uma Ubai continues back to say, um, remember, say government through the finance, we don't pay for 204 students then. But only 70 has been paid. So what thing happen to the rest? So I think this is just the concern we um, Alpha Omar Ubari the race from China for the stipend and for the students there in China. So I will hand over to the minister for making a response to the one before Kaiser Thank you very much. And I want for the so the other thing I want to say to Mr. Bari, not just to Mr. Bari, but also to all the students there, the union students who really study in China, we are eligible for the stay long time we need. This the ongoing issue, not priority within the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education. And I gladly, as I don't say earlier, for this platform with the Ministry of Information and Civil Education now play. Because it's a way for the we self the account. We're here to serve. Now, so Ms. Yang, we are appointed to serve, so we should be held accountable. So this and as a ministry, we're very transparent. So this platform is what we will be very glad for. So the issue with China, Mr. Bai, we as I don't mention a priority for the ministry, and even before I assume office, I don't become aware of that. Even before my first day in my office as a Minister of Technical and Higher Education, I don't become aware of them. And as something from the one, we don't need addressing. We don't need try for addressing. And but also thing we get for change overnight. We get for get them, we get for address them in such a way for late next year, we don't face the any kind of challenge here. So we very aware say some students in the way we still need for verify, we get for both good forces for verify say yes they're eligible and once we don't do that as a ministry have no doubt say we they we, we they do what we need for do as a ministry as as a government to ensure say what is due to students in china will be given to them so i just want for ask the students and for later just exercise a little bit of patience now this has also what they discuss with them as a time we can talk to the students president in china just for ensure, say we very open and transparent for say what we try for this. At the point in time, we even ask them for giving some 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 um, um, sorry for guiding. But we're not guide for provide some documentation. We will inform how we do things. Then just that just to show say how we want for address this problem in a way where everybody will involved. The voice captured and the solution will come, will be put forward, will be something where everybody will be glad, will be happy about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think um, that answer the um, very, very good that when I be assured, say the minister they look into that day and it they take action them. Um, we also want for tell, thank you, thank you to we community radio stations them across the country. We also the link. For make sure say this press conference they link out to community them across the country. We have for plenty of to station managers them where they appoint them community education and day. We also get a question. We just want to finish from the one day we sent question earlier through the QR code. We get this one winner for the minister for basic Conrad. They say when is the worst result going to be released? 
And then the other one, they don't answer them. Now, whether the free quality education will continue, whether they don't answer them. And so, the worst results when it will be. Easy. Okay, first of all, I'd like to preface the answer to this question. Um, the West African Examination Council, that semi autonomous branch of the ministry, so that they run on their own, but we, the ministry gets oversight over them. I did contact the head of um, um, WIAC for Salon, and in term, we see that they work towards releasing the results by the end of this week. But I don't like to, uh, I know I'm for those rely on that. Let me create some flexibility. Between the end of this week and mid next week, was to come up. And let me just also just answer the other question, who said Bekeri Komo? Bekeri Komo by the end of this month. We are mindful of the fact that they need the worst results for people at Foko University, the university is just about to um, open. So we put pressure on a wife, but one for make sure they do a quality work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade. So, uh, we have put the minister, minister say, end of this week to meet next week. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, so you can put some fine. So, we don't get the questions then from people and we the following do the QR code and the one that we send before now. But we don't say una self work in camp, we don't spend our time, left on our work, left on our um boku publishing house for make on our David Sweet. So we can take the four set of questions then. But as usual, one question, keep up very short, not make too much preamble. Yeah? So we'll get as much question as we can because we want for stop sharp is that in our end yeah so we we'll make them nicely so they do one two three four okay the first one one two three four all right the next set i will prioritize woman so we'll start with you sir not to promote the ambulance well well my name is mohammed arakama the right for daily scope newspaper. When the question was asked now to the Minister of Higher Education, and I want to know regarding the LCG. Of course, the LCG now, according to the head of uh, communications for USL, it talks well now that the, um, the LCG, the government they pay off, but now not half. So now the government they pay only the uh, the two should be, and then you still are the pay charge. So I'm gonna know why, and why that change. And also to the minister. Okay, no, 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 that day, no, that day, no. That day, clear on the to policy. Yes, Emmanuel, yes. All right, thank you. So Emmanuel, as usual, expo. Before I ask him a question, I need a concern. No, no, no. So you choose either if you raise the concern, or you raise the concern. I'm sir. No, no, no. It's all part of the question, sir. Hey. You have follow up make a very nice and tidy. Yes, sir. Either you get concern or you get question. Which one do you want to do? The concern is all the questions, sir. No, no, no. We got Boku and the video of here. Okay, then let me ask the question, sir. Thank you very much. To the Minister of Education uh, and Higher Education, uh, we understand this school will be open the 4th of this month. And there was a policy from the Minister of Education that um, schools that will open that effectively forget normal learning. But then on the contrary, personally me, I visited few schools now Mashaka because I've been taking the shit but go the main name for make sure see because Sman is not only free town. I visited few schools like Eastern Federation of Mashaka and Amadia. Surprisingly to me, uh, now the Islamic Federation on no school picking, the principal know the now the vice principal. I go to the Amadia and tell me say out of 735 school picking we get that record. Only two attended. Out of 26 teachers who were in getting a record, only nine attended. With the policies being set from the Minister of Education, how will I get putting take action towards this issue? And because not only the school and they being not being followed the celebration of the ministry. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, good afternoon. My name is Akmo Fihiri. And I want to ask a critical question <laughs> to, to the government of Sahelo. The security sector, the police, the ONS, and everybody we concerned with security. Sometimes back on still, we see an incident like this who happened yesterday. And there was audio will come on the eve of the incident. 
I take your mind back to Makeni, there was a generation, generator issue. Yeah, we are audios just before that incident. Go back to Tumbu. And clearly, evidentially, it also say people in the that the diaspora, where then they push them messages there and for perpetrate violence and make the country very ungovernable and unpeaceful. Question. The question now to the government. Names that don't come up, one of them is Alibayo. Is it that from 2018 to now, the security sector coupled with the government not able to track one man where evidentially they need to perpetrate a voice message and perpetrate their activity that we don't have. Thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. Yes. Mohamed Kibara, the watch. No, I saw this so I hope to be here. Kayo, Kayo. The general public expects it. Let's start the way. Aha. Yeah, Mohamed Kibara of the watch. Mr. Alfonso, the general public expects it. The civil society organization is represented by the immediate of the government of society, going as well as society and government. Yeah, you see the Minister of Higher and um, Technical Education don't talk. Quite a lot of students that they can't go abroad and university because they don't get for seat exam, entrance examination. Back home, when you don't struggle for your Fiki, you don't go up to WAS, you get up to nine subjects then, age five to nine, when you want to enter university, you get for seat another entrance examination. This the CSO not talk, not do that to stand firmly against that because actually we in the media think to say this it gets a lot for the for all people, the free quality education if at all free quality education is education for all this is not the example we expect what she will do sir thank you very much uh, we will go take two more yes uh, the man in purple yes yes we are yes yes don't worry everybody will ask question yes yes Yes. 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 And then there was a standoff between um, the lecturers and the government in terms of some, some criteria and concerns. How far um, the ministry don't go in setting some of them issues in it? And one of the points is that this issue of SFG. Now, they get a lot of SFG at the end of the day. Uh, in the Thank, you. Thank you very much, SFG. Yes. And city voice newspaper. The question goes to the Madam Minister. Very recently, the Association of Academy staff they threatened to cut down their tools if agreement between government and university are not implemented, such as salary increment. So, what do you you can do to solve that situation, Madam Minister? Thank you very much. So we don't, yes, but the last one way will be on this table and then we the respond. Yes, sir. I'm Hassan Meshikulman, Concord Times newspaper. So the security sector, um, we want to know how many arrests we will now make and also we want to know the total victim or people we they killed by this guy yesterday. All right, thank you very much. Now put it for me. Uh, the panelists all go make um, short two, two minutes response to that. But first on Adibayo for government. Um, government, they follow processes. Government, they follow standards internationally. We compile we for how we for able ask other country for get somebody who will not say who don't get enough evidence say in actions that don't lead to crimes that we don't commit in this country. That process day will not start our way before now and will continue that process day. And we know say we get good relationship with obviously the good Dutch government for make we able to escalate that one day. So I want to assure you say government not just the sit down, they listen to audio. Government will do everything we can through due process, through the international laws, the way they guide them process there for me to make sure say we can able to get Adibayo for can face the consequence of what we don't do. So we can start with the security sector who come out, we will come to Madam Minister and then Conrad and then Alfonso. Okay, 
think on my paper, I can briefly state, say, it can be slow, it can be painful, but it's not impossible. We will get reach the I sure say we will reach the everybody will be satisfied with the process there. When the Prime Minister say we get up for the due process, you require international cooperation. We we'll reach that level. Other countries they don't know how we say can move forward. Brother go answer of the aspect of the global horizon. No. Okay. Ah, it is asked to arrest for uh, for Godish. The arrest for Godish division. You know, we call it Abukia. Wataru. The arrest sixty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for mountains, the arrest eight. Mountain division and this one, which I, um, they are making in that city, and they cover that area. So, this is the one they will get for now, and then if more they will turn up as we move on. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> 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 so, the, okay, we get uh, two reports made that didn't come to me. We now are at the bottom of the police station, say two person uh, allegedly. Three bullets, and as soon as they carry it to me, and then we don't decide for launch an investigation to determine the circumstances of that issue. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. 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 So, um, Mr. Kamara, you ask about student fees versus charges. Just last week, the ministry, we meet with the student union for the university we involved and for discuss this very issue. We bring out our attention. And what we would all say, we would all listen, we would therefore engage with the right people there for see how we can address. We don't get answer right now until we engage with the right people. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Jackson, you ask about SLG not being paid. As a ministry, we um, we don't engage with the Ministry of Finance for be very proactive for see how we can address some of their challenges there as well. And again, it, 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 again will be a very consultative process for meet with the right people in back and see how this can be addressed. But one thing I can say, the government very, very committed for addressing challenge there as well. The first, from 2018 to 2023, education was a flagship program. And the government commits a huge percentage of the budget to education. From now to 2023, education for me, According to, we know about the big five. Education, they run right across the big five. For me, education, nine are the, nine, nine are the, nine are the driver for national development. So, it is shown us how the government committed. We get to achieve all of that, and education gets to be the foundation we we'll build upon. So, that issue there, it's something where we don't discuss with the Ministry of Finance, we don't meet with the relevant stakeholders, and we don't begin the dialogue as to how we can address that problem there. And then Mr. Marat talked about the Union of Academic Staff Association. Yes, they come to the Ministry a few weeks ago, and they, they, they submit to me, they, they concern them. But even before then, they can't step to be in the Ministry, we the not Ministry of Finance or discuss some of the issues they need before we can see say, this can be a potential issue. So again, it's all, it's all down to dialogue. We have to dialogue with the right people. There. And when we don't dialogue, when we don't make, make a decision, we don't, we don't all man day on board, then we will communicate to the media accordingly. But be rest assured that the issues they need are something where we let it take lightly, and something where we, it's, a, it's a priority within the ministry, and we ensure so we will level best to see how best we can address them in a realistic manner in the shortest time possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go to uh, Conrad from Basic Education. Well, 
But first of all, uh, I, I'll be able to tell the journalist who asked this question of what we take it. Um, we get 12,000 schools. Um, we're not able to cover all of the schools and the way the school just open, but we send out a team who is quality assurance and, and a vision for make sure say, that they have that the school there for monitor and uh, attendance. I may not be the in the country at the time, but I know see the deputy ministers then said go out and make sure say, they continue that monitor day. But let us just go back to one more thing. Um, attendance is a big issue, both for teachers and for people. So we pilot a, a new project called Vidia, where we will use an app within a, a, a tablet. The idea is that we will scale this up and give all the uh, school and the community a tablet we will use to begin to attendance monitoring. Now this tablet is GPS coordinated. We need to say if you do the tablet na Kintom and you school the Kisi, you will not say that Kintom you do the tablet. Um, but we don't pilot out, the results that we'll get is very positive. These are something we we'll use both for teachers and also for pupils. But for pupils, it's important. I'll tell you why. Because it's part of this thing for protect with beginners. Some of the beginners will not in go school, they get other issues they will not deal with. And if we get indication that they're between and they not go school all the time, we get package that we will put in place for make sure, say, we support them. So I tell you about 13.7 million we will get for education for all. Part of that package is for do this type of work with some other people in a way the attendance not very good. So we are aware of that as an issue. And Salona, one of the foremost countries in the tropical Africa, we get up what they use. So we use technology to make them more effective, more efficient. So I tell you, Boku, thank you for that. We'll keep an eye on this um, as we go forward. Thank you very much, Conrad. Um, I think if you get one question from Isaiah Soma. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Well, of course, I have to be honest. We are the Ministry of Basic Education open and tomorrow for CSO look at the activity, not be so for higher education. Uh, Reason being, for five years now, the PS they put a it, it very difficult. And that can only ministry we want to give PS only for the past five years. I want to be honest. The activity are not transparent to CSO and then no more they work for themselves. So we can find that very difficult. When it's come to basic, we don't see for me Dr. Seng every day, Alpha, Timbo, they all open their doors to CSO. And not the higher education. Even as far as the issue we make, we talk about the minister system, always the So I don't want to go into that. But I just talk to them about the issue and the permanent safety is the barrier for the public. Thank you. Um, all right, I want to um, minister say definitely um, in those they always open as always and we know say the PSF now possibly a fantastic civil servant. So I don't say you will build on good working relationship. Yeah? Um, we'll go to the last set of questions then. And I will want also forget woman they are name up because one make woman itself as special of woman them inside. So uh it's a language my mission for our ask question. Okay. Um, so we start from here. Anyone there on that side who ask question? Okay. Very satisfied. Right. So you get for come on that side there if you ask question. Um, okay, so we we'll start with you. Um, where, where do you go with Mike? No, not to you, sir. Okay. Yes, we we'll start with the woman. We get the woman. Where do you go with Mike? Okay, madam, mommy, you can use uh, that mic. Move the mic, they come. Let me just use the open mic. I think the important way to make I just explain why I want to make it talk. Because it also the work in a critical sector. When for people that we know the talk and know the hearing. And I make we make a candidate for Apple sign language. Because we are an inclusive government. It means we create space for everybody. 
For me, they say be part of governance. So now I make and make sure say you said ask question. Okay, good afternoon again. No. Me now I'm Peters. I'm in the Sudan Dakota and as well I'm the director for children and ambition to see an example of communication. So my question goes uh, directly to the mentor of this. I've asked this question two years ago at the particular point in the information. But I will ask again because we don't get a new minister. Talking about inclusive education, I hear the talk about school and get around and so here in Pia kids don't need to have school in sign language services. And uh, as a country we get over 3,000 people living with here in Nigeria. We just get five interpreters. So, just after primary school, then we can be able to continue JSS and SS because we're not going to sign language interpreters at in these schools there. So, we're not going to be able to reach that child level. It means uh, to the higher education minister. You notice all the university contact will be continued. It's in one here in the key where they even do touch your institution. Where they need to touch your institution. Why? Because of lack of sign language interpreters. So I want to see, I want to know what the ministry they do. Because I know so that they do well when it comes to other areas. Okay. In the inclusiveness. But we are the talk as a we because I think myself a part of them. We are not inclusive when it comes to education. And this is more important. Okay. I want to know why. Thank you very much, Mami. I know say both the ministers I don't take note of that day. We will go to the gentleman. Long make a short shot, so at least the will will respond. So the question they go to the government in the person of the Minister of uh, oh, yeah. Communication and Civic Education. You say the protests that they have on uh, faceless protest, but uh, the ban from ONS clearly indicates say that even get people let down under police detention with the planners of the, 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 the one yesterday. And we don't see even the August 10 protest reports become an independent committee was set up, reports come on recommendations come on. This government not on act, I can say, categorically on those reports. You know, things say that's my recipe for me to get more protest in, in four years. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, Lord Campbell, yes, yes. Lord Campbell, sorry, sir. You're an elderly nation in there, please. Yeah? Lord Campbell, down to the Maui where you live, please. Yeah? No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. Una uh, the mic now, please. All right, so I get the mic quick, please. The nomenclature at the same time. This time minister of information and basic at what civic area. I want I really want to hold your attention. Now unfortunate situation happened yesterday. Yes, we have this to be season. We were outside from here. But as the minister, you take me to cognizant this thing that happened about the 1965 or before the act and about the 1991 constitution, about the day of protest. You know, you say we get problem to what stand it, to what clarity. Because people in their plight, then we don't see them in their clarity. Maybe they get a meaningful listen. But government towards inclusiveness, they can look at that area again. And as a ministry, what do you want to do for CCA? Because what do you have now? So what the area of Archie, economic living, and also the minimum wages, in not encouraging to people there. How do you want to We go to get the president. But that will address the situation as the need to do not be OK, thank you very much. You asked more than one question, but that's OK. Because you're a bomb All right. <laughs> 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 Yes, on this side. Yes. Yeah. Me question for the uh, uh, tertiary education minister. Basically, we know say the low skin and we don't rule out, but it's in the pilot space. Um, <coughs> I want to know whether we still on the pilot space or whether they will rule out or waiting in the current state at the moment. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we'll take the last any human day who are asked. Okay, if not the last person, yes, it's money for. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, I mean, our oh, independent officer on this paper, and this is the police directly. The last time we get incident between police and all of the DPC supporters, the police of the uh, the police went at the press conference and the men say they don't shoot. They say they get bullets and so forth, and the suspects say they come out from the supporters and so forth. So, this killing may have been some of the reports of people that never actually bullets. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, that will be the last question we have. Um, we will just start on two of the questions. The first one, you say, I say the faceless, uh, because the Public Order Act 1965, very clear, uh, section 17, give the process waiting for happen before possibly make a possession yeah i'll talk to you as a lawyer as well so if nobody no apply or notify the ig say ig one process so from this point to this point it simply me say we don't get any group we don't get anybody then one the way the only yesterday then definitely go for all them for crimes the way they will commit in the process of what you have yesterday so it means that if you don't violate offense system by the public order act, now you make police go all them. So it's separate and it's different. And then, uh, Mr. Bomba, you talk about um, what in government they do for the hardship and all that kind of thing. And thing. We are very honest and transparent government. We're very clear. The very president way now we let them talk say hardship day. You know why they say hardship day? And this achieve not just salon. Achieve the across the world and in different countries then. I don't make reference to interviews that we are not talk say in places like Nigeria, the price of 50 kg bag of rice, more expensive per salon. Cape Verde, Côte d'Ivoire, Senegal, beaucoup of their country they did. Yeah? So what if they say that the fact say we as a government recognize the achieve the but government also try in the best ability for make sure say we push the achievement in how we do up. For instance, on the fuel subsidy. If government told me they continue for do fuel subsidy, the price will get now for long go. In other countries like Liberia, make mention of that one day. There was a time where they began to the queue just for bias. What will the queue for bias now? You know? So yes, there are challenges, but government will do everything we can for make sure say we push in the achievement in. I will go to the security people for the response from the to the minister for higher education and then come here. Yes, um, somebody did ask, uh, say that I'm for clients and other people. You know, sometimes we know they test the law. The law did it and did not change even when they amendment to the law. We now need the Public Order Amendment Act of 2020 because they expunge part five of the law. But still, still the part of the law, we provide say if you apply or you notify the Inspector General of Police, and then you will get four considerations, like the constitution with regards to public order, public safety, public morality, and the defense of the state. I don't know, and I will talk about it, I don't know last to receive application for demonstration. We all know that if you, if you don't apply before, me could know. But people know they apply. People just assume say if we apply or not they get. But if you say they assume say if we apply or not they get, then you don't apply, then which you not legal. Because the provisions of the law very clear, even at the West, when I leave the man for good, if you want for good demonstration, you they apply. So that one day I think my best way of answer. Somebody asked for the bullets there. The word on how talk say we don't launch an investigation for determine the circumstances of the death. I don't want to be, I don't want to be conclusive. I think we are not conclusive. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much um, to the gentleman for in question. I'm not quite catch your name. So this is the gentleman we asked about the current state of the Sierra uh, Leone with the loan scheme. So you're right, yes, we don't pile up the loan scheme for postgraduate students. And the intentions were to reduce the loan scheme at pile up stage and for say we would have planned for scale up. But well, some of the two will just take so long. We'll get for look how it work the first time round with the pilot team. Waiting, we need for address because pilots are small number. We scale them up, we have a full number of the 
So the challenge is already at the finals level for ensure so we address them, we get measures in place to address any potential challenge before we scale them up. Because if we scale them up without doing that, we will scale up any potential challenge as well. For the intention for we introduce that loan scheme with at pilot phase, as I don't say that because we plan for scale them up. So when we order to the loan is for consider as well. And again, when we are ready for if we when we are ready for scale them up, we will notify members of the public accordingly. And then just quickly, I'll not be one for react to this, but in the interest of transparency, it's just to the, the comment where Mr. Alfonso make earlier. Um, so as a government, as a ministry, we will work with very many stakeholders there. And me they welcome criticism, constructive criticism. So I take down there as constructive criticism. We will take down there on board thank for seeing how we can address that. Thank you, thank you. But the 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 the, 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 the permanent sector, yes, it don't need it for, for it gets a wealth of experience. And me personally, being new to the ministry, I don't learn a lot from her. So we'll create that dialogue platform there for see how we we'll address the challenges and also the SLG insights them. I will be very happy for you and for one for improve on this thing. But I know we'll talk about offline. Thank you very much. Sir. All right, we can to Conrad. Okay, just very quickly, I think in a sense, I think you might have misunderstood slightly what you are saying. But um, can we do better? Yes, we can. Um, you asked the question two years ago. I want you to engage me for we'll level work on this. I also want to give credit to the previous minister because I see on that in tenure, we begin posting and like assistive technology, reasonable accommodations, and all the entertainment that may not be ever in our salon. I have great ambition for education at salon, so I want to let you come work with me. And let me make sure, say, the next door I can have, I say, the first country we don't get into our school. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. My question will be here for you. Okay, but just one minute, one minute, yeah? One minute, one minute, one minute. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, of course, I recommend the Ministry of Basic Education for the openness. But again, in terms of the payment of subsidy with the rates, if you look at the fee subsidy guideline, it could say within 20%, and do 50%, and 30%. Mm. And if you put standard subsidy not paid for the last time, then you wonder how the schools they run. That's why you say those auxiliary staff in schools don't go for six months without salary. Those teachers without pin code also don't go for six months. And this is not the fault of the Ministry of Basic Education. And this is the Ambok Education Governance. When principal call the math teacher, when I volunteer teacher, say get class now, they ask her when last you give me Mr. Ben. So please, the Ministry of Finance, you all understand say things are difficult. But if they pay fee subsidy on time, I think that will pull load that the minister and also the principal will run the school effectively. Thank you. Well, to be honest with you, I I I I, I give much respect to Alfonso because now equal opportunities. Uh, and um, CSO, if you don't give the Ministry of Technical, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't give the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education, so we said you expect you. <laughs> but on a positive note, um, I want to say in terms of school subsidies, we don't really pay school subsidies. And the other thing we are going to also say, we perhaps another thing the public don't know about, um, just about last week, the um, World Bank actually approved $900,000 uh, for the payment of what they call performance-based financing to 5,000 schools. So in addition to the school subsidies, there are other funding that we also give to them for everyone next year. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, thank you for all the questions they want to ask. Um, we actually be on time for dawn 3.30. And the last one we'll get, now the fact say, the conversation between Una and the Ministry of the stop here. It just starts. Mm -hmm. So if you get any further questions, clarifications, where you want to ask the ministers then, um, you will find me, and um, take, and also the count book off and stuff, the way they are, Una can contact, they will come to people, and get the information. 
and also the security people them as well. If we can get any further information, we will get or clarification on what they have been so far. We can get for contact them and contact and tell them. And we will continue for our show. I say that uh, we country peaceful, everything is normal, and we will continue for encourage people in. Where they out, where they try for inciting parliament and stop, because it's not good for the country, it's not good for the country image. At the end of the day, we all get a collective responsibility to make sure say we consolidate with peace and also we strengthen national cohesion. So on that note, I want to tell um, we sister we come out from the side where they look after people away. They know the talk, they know the year, we get speech in parliament for many days. We hope say it will continue for day with three in subsequent weeks then. So on that note, thank you very much to everybody. Una we watch with us in our office and across the country. We'll come back to na next week. Thank you very much.